My Lords, the hybrid sitting of the House will now resume. I ask members to respect social distancing. Private notice question on free school meals. Lord Watson of Invergari. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. I call the Minister. Lady Berridge. My Lords, the images circulating of poor quality food parcels are unacceptable. My right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Education, has met with leading suppliers to insist on urgent action to ensure parcels meet the standards expected. We have guidance in place allowing schools to decide the best approach for supporting free school meal pupils. This can be through lunch parcels, locally arranged vouchers or the National Voucher Scheme, which will be up and running next week. I call Lord Watson of Invergari. My Lords, it's a case of another week, another U-turn, this time resulting from the scandal of companies supplying free school meals parcels being exposed as profiteering. Perhaps the Noble Baroness Minister will explain why the jointly prepared DfE guidance for the contents of food parcels, which is strikingly similar to the meagre items in parcels described as disgraceful by the Prime Minister, is still online. National food vouchers are now to be reintroduced next week two weeks after schools moved to remote learning. My Lord, it seems the government's own lockdown it took them by surprise. It will be at least a week from today until parents can actually use the vouchers. So why will the government not put its trust in families and give them the money for free school meals? Children are going hungry now and any decent government would know they cannot wait. My Lords, um, the uh, voucher scheme that the Noble Lord uh, outlines is one of the options that have been given to schools so that they can meet the needs of the pupils who require food. It has been quite clear that my right, the Right Honourable Secretary of State met with uh, and the Minister for Children and Families met with a particular supplier and we have made clear that those standards were not acceptable. We have met, given these options to schools so that they can best need, meet the needs of their pupils and they know them best. Uh, and in fact, the National Voucher Scheme schools can re-register this week and vouchers will be redeemable um, as of Monday, but we have left it to schools to choose um, which is the best means to uh, deliver free school meals for their pupils. I call Lord Storey. Um, my Lords, can the Minister confirm that the company providing these meals will not get compensated for the cancellation of the contract, thereby getting money for nothing on top of money for little food? And furthermore, does, she, does the Minister agree with Marcus Rashford that now is the time for a full review of the free school meals system? My Lords, uh, as I've outlined, uh, the views were made clear about the quality of the food parcels that were outlined. I, I must make it clear, though, that, of course, the department does not enter into contracts with any of these suppliers. These are done at local levels and the standards that food needs to meet are outlined in uh, statute and the, the guidance is under that. So it is quite clear what should be um, outlined. And I must pay tribute to most school staff who and catering staff who are delivering meals to those free school meals pupils who are in school and delivering and often the option of delivering food parcels to the door is the best to meet the, um, uh, th to meet the needs of a vulnerable child, and particularly it keeps the school in contact with them directly. I call Lord Krebs. My Lords, government figures show that over 4 million children in the UK live in pom poverty, and many of these children will be living in food insecurity. However, there are no official figures. Therefore, could the noble Baroness, the Minister, tell us when the government will publish its assessment of how many children in the UK are living without enough healthy food? And could she tell us what policies they will implement to tackle this problem, both in the short and the long term? Minister. My Lords, uh, the government is awaiting the second part of the national food strategy, and we have said that we, um, that we will respond uh, with a white paper within uh, six weeks weeks of that strategy being published. We have um, expanded the entitlement for free school meals. Um, at the moment, there are 1.4 million children who re receive free school meals. And we have given the undertaking that any family that moves from legacy benefits onto universal credit uh, has a, uh, a, an entitlement to free school meals. So we are meeting the needs of children. And that's uh, it, it, um, and in addition to that, there are the holiday activities clubs that we have expanded um, as of the Easter holidays of this year. So we are looking to meet the needs of those in our society who need food. I call Baroness Jenkin of Kennington. 
My lords, I wonder if my noble friend can confirm how this affects food waste and whether I'm right in understanding that much of this food, which is, of course, designed for lunches only, had been ordered or bought well in advance. My lords, one of the key, the noble lady is correct, um, and one of the key reasons that the government gave chip schools the choice was because they were aware of the, uh, obviously, the operation of their own school catering staff, but also certain suppliers had already purchased food um, and they'd already paid for it. And so, obviously, moving to a voucher system immediately could have resulted um, in food waste. And giving the flexibility to schools um, in terms of local vouchers enables them to use local suppliers and support their local economy. I call Lord Griffiths of Burryport. My Lords, the, the Prime Minister has said that uh, Marcus Rashford is doing a better job at uh, holding the government to account than the official opposition. So does that mean that the Prime Minister is now prepared to accept Mr Rashford's advice that this review, this major review of free school meals and indeed of child poverty might be undertaken by them as a result of mistakes recently made. And can I ask, whilst on my feet, that uh, the government, when it adds insult to injury by handing out these disgraceful bags, which would have been an insult to those receiving them, that whenever policies are directed towards those trapped in poverty, they should never forget the, 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 the dignity of those receiving them and to treat them with respect. My Lords, I uh, join with obviously the Prime Minister in paying tribute to the work of Marcus Rashford, which was recognised in the latest honours um, uh, that he was given. In relation to the flexibility that we have given to schools here, it is important to remember that schools know their children are best. They know whether food parcels are best. And uh, obviously the receipt of a food parcel can be vital if the parent, for instance, at home at the moment is extremely clinically vulnerable. So a voucher would perhaps not be the best. Schools do not generally want to deal in cash. And, and yet Yet we have also seen though, the use of food parcels that are not necessarily synonymous with a lack of dignity in terms of the clinically vulnerable people in the first stage of the pandemic and also the businesses that have sprung up during the pandemic using food that was potentially to supply restaurants and delivering it door to door. So although there needs to be sensitivity in each situation, it is not synonymous with a lack of dignity to offer uh, actual food to people. I call Lord Greaves. Lord Greaves, you're muted. Well, I, I unmuted myself, as agreed, and somebody's muted me again, and I've unmuted again. Um, it needs sorting out. My Lords, uh, there does not appear to be a major problem in Lancashire because Lancashire County Council, and I congratulate them for this, set up a countywide voucher scheme for schools at the start of the... Uh, uh, when the schools closed again after the first day. If Lancashire could do this on a countywide basis in this county, why could the government not do it straight away nationally? My Lords, I, I, I applaud the example the Noble Lord has given and I've outlined why it is important that these three options are open to schools. The national voucher system, as I've said, um, schools can re-register this week, uh, re reactivate their accounts and uh, vouchers will be redeemable and available on Monday. And also, of course, um, the those who are uh, providing uh, free school meal uh, entitlement to those who are also qualify for the breakfast club, uh, that food should also be being provided. This has been stood up um, as soon as we, we can. And in the last phase of the uh, pandemic, we did distribute over £380 million through a national voucher scheme. But we were, um, uh, uh, Noble Lords did make clear that there were downsides to that, that this, this meant that only business was given to supermarkets. So it is important that we use the food and do food parcels, local vouchers and national vouchers. I call Lord Lumba. My Lords, I commend the government's decision to provide lunches to school children. However, sadly, due to caterers' carelessness, there has been a great deal of variation in the contents of the food parcels. Can the noble lady, the minister, say what steps the government is taking to tighten up and be more specific to stop this form happening again? Or alternatively, would you consider the voucher scheme again which will go some way to alleviating 
this problem as some schools still prefer to use their school caterers, which also helps to save jobs. The Noble Lord, I'm grateful to the Noble Lord for outlining and, and the role that school caterers have at the moment. And some of them obviously want to be involved in the delivery of those free school meals to the, to the children who qualify who are at home. Um, it is very clear the standards that of, of food that should be provided is based upon a statutory requirement and, and the, lo the Association of School uh, Food and Caterers is part of, was part of putting that together. And the provision of food should be sensitive, obviously, to dietary requirements, to allergies, but also to religious and cultural sensitivities so that the food that's provided, whether it's in school or by way of delivery, is appropriate for the children. Sardison of Welton. My Lords, this recent episode has once again highlighted the importance of an effective free school meals programme. Can my noble friend the Minister confirm whether the Government is considering the recommendation outlined in Part 1 of the National Food Strategy to expand eligibility for the free school meal scheme to include every child from a household where the parent or guardian is in receipt of universal credit? Minister. Indeed, my lords, yes, we are considering the, the first part of the National Food Strategy. We expect part two to be with us uh, later, um, potentially this month, and the government has made that commitment to uh, respond to that. We will be carefully considering that suggestion, but it must be borne in mind that um, uh, with the universal credit system, there is a long taper rather than a cliff edge for benefits. And so um, uh, there is data available that would suggest that half the school population would then be eligible uh, for free school meals and some households in receipt of income of in excess of £40,000 a year. So those suggestions need to be considered carefully as to whether that is the best use of public funds. I call Baroness Lister of Berterset. My Lords, returning to the questions from my noble friends, humiliating is how one parent described their treatment. They asked, why should you decide for us? Why not give us the money? Which in the words of an academic expert is the best way of ensuring families are supported with dignity, respect and freedom of choice. Why not give parents the money? Does the government not trust them? Stop. My Lords, um, the, of course, the government um, uh, trusts um, parents, and that's why we have given these options to schools in terms of how to deliver that. And if there is any complaint about the, the treatment, obviously, um, the parents should raise that with the school. And there are also avenues further to uh, make those representations. But as I've outlined, particularly during the pandemic, schools do not want to deal with cash and distributing cash to parents. That is why a local or national voucher uh, system is by far and away the, the, the best option in terms of monetary uh, uh, um, support rather than cash. I call Baroness Bennett of Manor Castle. My Lords, can the Noble Lady the Minister confirm that the National Voucher Scheme will be operating through the same private company as last time? Uh, and can she reassure me that its computer system will be adequate, that staff, school staff or indeed parents won't find themselves having to log on at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning as the only time when it's possible to get into the system? And given that's a for-profit company, what would the Noble Lady the Minister consider a reasonable profit for that company to be making on, on the scheme? 5%, 10% or more? My Lords, um, I can assure Noble Lords that, uh, as I've outlined from Monday, uh, the e-codes e will be issued that can then be redeemed against supermarket vouchers. And the department is monitoring very closely the logistics and uh, around the scheme being uh, set up. And we are anticipating, of course, thousands of, of uh, schools wanting to access uh, that uh, portal as soon as, as they can. Uh, but uh, we are monitoring this properly. And as I say, though, we did, um, in, in an emergency in a pandemic, stand up a system that delivered £380 million worth of vouchers last time. Call Baroness Bakewell of Hardington Mandeville. My Lords, I welcome the government's decision to issue families with food vouchers, allowing them to choose the food to feed their children with a daily main meal. The quantity of food eaten by a six-year-old girl is not the same as that eaten by a 14-year-old boy. Can the Minister reassure the House that the value of the vouchers will take account of the age of the child and the quantity of the food they require? Minister. 
my lords, um, the the value of the voucher has actually been raised uh, from the normal £11.50, which is a free school meal, to £15, recognising, of course, that schools can buy and catering supplies buy at a, uh, a, a have economies of scale that a family would not um, have. And yes, I did indeed ask just this morning that, yes, in terms of the um, food that is supplied through a food parcel, it would we would expect schools, although we can't, we don't, uh, we would expect schools to deliver food that is appropriate, and that a primary school uh, food parcel would look very different from a um, secondary school age pupil uh, food parcel.